Yo, 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 what's going on, fellas? It's your boy Tristan, aka Sriracha DFS, back once again with DFS Karma. Welcome to another episode of First Impression, where we do a very early preview of the next or upcoming NBA slate, aka today's NBA slate. The main purpose of the video is to give you guys the uh, totals of each game, who's favored, injury rundown, who benefits, who takes a hit, you know the vibes. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you do not miss out on any of our free media content or live streams. Also, make sure you're in our free chat room where we discuss things DFS 24 7 all day, every day um there's we have experts in there free advice live before a lock channel free articles free plays free picks free free chat i don't i don't know what else i could say to uh persuade you guys anymore but go to chatdfs.com link will be down in the description below you get it for free you accept the invite you're in there with us and it's a good time carmination baby with that being said let's go ahead and get started nba slate eight games Milwaukee at Orlando is the first game on the slate. Um, opened up at a 225 and a half total. Milwaukee favored by eight and a half. Um, this one's going to be huge because uh, on the Milwaukee side, uh, Drew Holiday's probable, so he's going to play. Dante DiVincenzo is going to play. Brooke Lopez probable. Chris Middleton's probable. So all of them are back besides Giannis Antetokounmpo, who's going to be out. Biggest usage guy player on that team. It's going to be a bump up to the main players like Drew Holiday. I literally just said him. Dante DiVincenzo, Brooke Lopez, Chris Milton, and uh, Bobby Portis might see the start in this game. On the Orlando side, Kareem Main questionable, Chuma Okeke questionable, Mobamba questionable, and Otto Porter out. This is a pretty weird situation because if Chuma Okeke sits, uh, I think you just give like a, a little bump to the newly signed guys, um, Dante Hall and Robert Franks, because they are kind of low at the uh, power forward position. Uh, they don't have a lot of depth there. Um, and if Mobamba sits, then it's a huge bump to uh, Wendell Carter Jr. because they don't have um, any center depth either. So he's going to get all those center minutes. Um, yeah. New Orleans at Cleveland is the next game on the slate. Opened up at a 227 total. New Orleans favored by 6.5. Cleveland is on a back to back. On the New Orleans side, Nikhil Alexander Walker's out. Lonzo Ball's out. And Josh Hart out as well. Um, that's huge because it's a bump up to the main guys who will be dependent on for offense, aka Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. Um, but also like a mini bump to Eric Bledsoe and Kira Lewis as well. Um, on the Cleveland side, Dylan Windler is questionable. And I think Larry Nance is likely to miss as well as Jared Allen, who's likely to miss as well. Um, if they both do sit again, it's a bump up to Isaiah Hartenstein, who's been seeing big minutes, um, especially in blowouts. Uh, I have to reiterate that. I think he's only great in blowouts because he's been playing mad time in blowouts and he's been doing well because, you know, he's a fantasy uh, per minute player or fantasy point per minute player. So um, a high one at least. So. Uh, Dean Wade also gets a little bump at Kevin Love. Um, I do want him to play more than 25 minutes, though. That's when I'll start playing him more often. But um, this is also a back-to-back -back spot, which is never really great for him. I, uh, he might even sit tomorrow. We'll see. Next game, Indiana at Memphis. Opened up at a 227.5 total, with Memphis being favored by 2.5. On the Indiana side, Miles Turner is out. Basically a big bump up to DeMontis Sabonis. He's going to get most of the center minutes. Um, Edmund Sumner is going to start uh, at the guards because Sabonis does move to center. Um, you're going to see more people like Doug McDermott and uh, Justin Holiday maybe play the four spot a little more. Um, on the Memphis side, Anthony Melton out, Justice Winslow out, and Jared Jackson is still out as well. Um, I think they need Jonas Valanciunas this in this matchup just to de defend DeMontis Sabonis, so I do like him as a play. Um, also, this gives a little bump to the Memphis guards uh, since those two are out. Uh, you don't really have to fight for much playing time um, as often because you still have a lot of people like Desmond Bain, John Conchar, Grayson Allen, Dylan Brooks, Ty Jones. Like it's a huge guard situation. It's just like Detroit. Um, next game, Toronto at New York opened up at a 212 and a half total. New York favored by half a point. Um, Toronto's on a back to back as well. On the Toronto side, Kyle Lowry is likely to play. Pascal Siakam is also likely to play. Um, Paul Watson's questionable and Fred Van Vliet's questionable as well. If both of the studs, um, Kyle Lowry and P Pascal Siakam, basically them being, being back is a bump down to most Toronto players like uh, Malachi Flynn. Um, Gary Trent, who had a career night last night, um, OJ and Anubi, this is a bump down to all those players, um, but they will be counted on for the offense um, if Fred Van Vliet sits. So um, monitor Kyle Lowry's minute limit. If it's if there is none, I do like him. Um, if there is some, then I probably will stay away. On the New York side, Mitchell Robinson's out and John Henson's out as well. Basically just little bumps to New Orleans, Noel and Julius Randle. Next game, Chicago at Minnesota opened up at a 231 total. Chicago favored by four and a half. On the Chicago side, Garrett Temple's doubtful. Um, nothing really changes here uh, because of the price and the, basically has 
they have like caught up uh, with the players um, and minutes have been settled um, related to their price. So um, definitely nothing really here. Minnesota side, Jalen Noel is questionable. Malik Beasley's out. Nothing really changes here as well. Uh, but do watch if D'Angelo Russell's minute limit gets lifted. Um, be but mainly like the usage is everywhere now. You have Anthony Edwards to share the ball with Carl Anthony Towns, Ricky Rubio, J.D. McDaniels, D'Angelo Russell. Those are all people who like touch the ball now and so it's all spread out um on the next game san antonio at dallas opened up at a 220 and a half total dallas favored by six on the san antonio side keita bates diop is questionable trey lyles is out gorgie gang is out as well nothing really changes here but you do get backup center minutes from drew ebanks eubanks sorry <laughs> on the dallas side willie collie stein is probable maxi kleber questionable and jj reddick is out if maxi kleber sits then basically it's just going to mean minutes for nicolo Melli. Um, nothing else more there. Next game, Detroit at Clippers opened up at a 221 and a half total. Clippers favored by 10 and a half. Uh, Detroit is on a back-to-back. -back. On the Detroit side, though, Wayne Ellington is in from rest yesterday. Ronnie Magruder questionable and Jeremy Grant questionable. Um, I would definitely be careful of a Mason Plumlee rest spot. Uh, I don't think it's likely to happen, but it, it's happened before. So if Jeremy Grant does continue to sit as well, um, basically a little bump to Josh Jackson, Sadiq Bay, and then uh, if Mason Plumlee does play, he does get a little bump as well. On the Clippers side, Rajon Rondo questionable, Patrick Beverly out, Kawhi Leonard out, and Serge Ibaka out as well. It's a bump up to mainly all the Clippers, uh, but actually, it's a bump up to all the Clippers, but mainly Paul George, Nick Batum, uh, Marcus Morris, Reggie Jackson, and then you might see a little Terrence Mann, but I think he's better at the two and one spot than the three, which is Kawhi's position, so um, we'll see, but we do... Uh, know that Paul George can shift to the three spot, uh, bringing in more Reggie Jackson or Terrence Mann minutes. Um, next game, last game, Miami at Portland opened up at a 222 total. Miami favored by one and Portland's on a back to back. On the Miami side, though, Gabe Vincent is probable. Dwayne Deadmon, newly signed, is questionable. Tyler Hero, questionable. Casey Okpala out and Victor Oladipo out. They just picked up Dwayne Deadmon. Um, I honestly think he will be available for tonight's game, to be honest, but. Um, uh, we'll see. If Tyler Harrow sits, it's a bump up to Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic, uh, Duncan Robinson, and uh, they also get big bumps from Victor Voladipo being out. <clears throat> but the team does play better with Victor being in. On the Portland side, Zach Collins is out, and uh, Yusuf Nurkic comes back from rest. Uh, so Ennis Cantor is probably out of play, um, especially after a 20-30 game last night. People going to, if they do think, <laughs> if they do play him, they're going to be chasing for sure. Um, but this game is pretty competitive, so we'll see about that. Uh, yeah, that wraps up this first impression video uh, for the upcoming NBA slate. If you like the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the DFS Karma YouTube channel for more daily media content like this and our live streams. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys all for watching. Uh, have a good Sriracha Sunday. Um, yeah, it's your boy Tristan, aka Sriracha DFS, on Sriracha Sunday. Good luck in your contest tonight and have yourselves a good one. I'm out. Peace. Peace.